Ladies and gentlemen, you asked for it. Now, we're going to cover every single dungeon that WoW has ever made and try and figure out some kind of order here. This has taken forever. There are a lot of them. I will try not to be as verbose as I usually am, but we'll see how it pays off, all right? Let's get started. There are obviously an absolute ton of dungeons in this game, so I won't be my usual verbose self, but I definitely have some things to say about a few of them. We're going to start at the absolute worst and work our way to the absolute best. Some of these are interchangeable by one place or something, but I've spent quite a bit of time figuring this out and... Some of these were forgettable, which was really interesting, and I had to go back and watch a video to remind myself of the dungeon. Some of them definitely did not leave a lasting impression, and I really wonder whether you guys will have the same problem of me mentioning a dungeon and being like, uh, but the footage in the background should hopefully bring some memories to you. All right, let's get started. The absolute worst of the worst dungeon ever made in World of Warcraft, the Violet Hold. I have no no memory of this that is positive in any way shape or form the only good thing i can even say about the violet hold is that it was close it was in dalaran that's it and it was fast so if it was the daily dungeon that we had to get done that, i mean that's the benefit it had is that it was it was painful but it was over quickly like pulling a tooth out this thing was awful which means next up is the assault on violet hold i cannot believe they remade this dungeon and then just made it the same it's tragic actually the remake of it has an underground area that was found on the ptr that was going to have some extra bosses in there and they just didn't do it uh if it wasn't for the fact that they had some interesting characters and bosses in there then it would just be so so horrendously bad uh, I cannot believe they remade this dungeon and just didn't improve it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, next up is Cathedral of the Eternal Knights. Good God. Uh, how many times did they have to reevaluate this dungeon? Who tested this is my question and said this will do, especially in the era of Mythic Plus. It was the dungeon that everybody dodged as much as possible. You may remember during my fresh account series, the Cathedral of the Eternal Knight key, I had to tank it by like seven levels because nobody in the game would do Cathedral of the eternal night uh, an absolute nightmare despite the fact it had so much potential on a similar note of addition additional dungeons that the game brought in my next one was actually seat of the triumvirate Running around, clearing trash to then do really very mediocre bosses was just never fun I don't recall again having a distinguishing fun memory of doing this dungeon uh testing it for the first time i was like eh. and then as we got more and more of it and certainly into the mythic plus era uh just absolute negativity all the whole way did not enjoy seat the triumph for it at all uh my next up to happiness to most of you guys i imagine would be the trial of the champion uh the togc which you guys are all angry about in my raids i have a lot of love for the raid i i'm fine with the raid the dungeon though oh blizzard Oh, Blizzard. It should have been so cool. Fighting the Black Knight, having mounted combat in there. The first version of it had horrendous amounts of RP that took forever, like five or six minutes. Then you got the mounted combat, which people just couldn't do, as they can't do in a lot of vehicle combat in World of Warcraft. They just completely fall apart and often would cause a wipe, meaning you had to go through the RP again. Uh, actually horrible they eventually fixed that but it still didn't help the fact that the dungeon just wasn't fun and then we had wave like a horde based thing which had delays in it it just everything about it was horrible uh, my next up is actually more based on disappointment i have a couple of fun memories and we're getting better obviously as we move up the list but the mother load the mother load is something i was so hyped for the idea of having all this tech in there and what they could do with it and what we ended up with was just a trash infested bonanza uh, no matter how much I did the mother load, I never enjoyed myself. Just having to clear waves after waves of trash, really irritating, annoying CC spells that needed multiple interrupts, much more than your ordinary cooldown. And just eventually, certainly when we got into Mythic Plus, just clearing the entire area of trash in the first few minutes and just being so bored uh, from start to finish. I actually I hated it. Uh, my next three all came at once, so I'm going to do them as one. And it's all the end time dungeons that came in in Kata. Good God. Um, these were supposed to... This is pre-Mythic Plus. So this is when these, these replaced every other dungeon in the expansion. And they were all so mind-numbingly easy and mind-numbingly terrible. Uh, you might recall, for those of you who watched me back then, is I did a video where we took a, a healing paladin that had no items i had unequipped trinkets and things and healed it just fine because nothing happens in these dungeons and they have the stupid gimmick boss at the end which could have been really good with resetting time 
Although it eventually just led to people just maintaining their cooldowns all the time and just killing the boss so nothing else happened. There's so much you can do with being able to reset time. Um, it boggles the mind that this ended up so badly. So that would be End Time, Hour of Twilight, uh, and the Well of Eternity. Thematically, okay, not the worst. Certainly the Well of Eternity for Lawheads was pretty cool, but all three of those dungeons were so painfully easy that, that I just hated them. And I hate that they became the de facto dungeons for the remainder of the expansion. Uh, surprisingly, I thought I'd put this lower down, but actually not. Ragefire Chasm is up next. Ragefire Chasm is actually fine. It's for a first dungeon of World of Warcraft, it's fine. But it's unquestionably terrible at the same time. It has that... For, if you've never played World of Warcraft, you're probably going to be impressed with Ragefire Chasm. But it, it lives and dies there, right? That's just the end of the story. It lives and dies at that moment. As soon as you do anything else, you're like, oh god, that dungeon sucks. So its redeeming quality is that. Uh, so it does end up down at the bottom of the list because it's it's unquestionably a garbage dungeon. But it, I have fun memories in there uh, and have fun of being on low-level alts with my friends trying to beat Rage by a Chasm. Obviously, we always win. It's garbage. Uh, but still, there is some fondness there. The same can be said for the Culling of Strathome. Um, the Culling of Strathome just turned into such a ridiculous meme uh, that it became horrendous. At the start of it, it was kind of fun. Uh, to do that, but pff, I mean, it quickly died off and then just became an absolute cloud of garbage. The same with the actual Strathom dungeon itself. Uh, the Culling of Strathom and Strathom, I kind of put in the same category. Like, Strathom, classic Strathom is better for sure, but it's very tedious to get through. Like, the Culling of Strathom is unquestionably awful, especially with the timed event at the end. Uh, but the other Strathom, it became kind of painful. Uh, to even go in there, whether it was Strat Live or Strat Undead. I prefer Strat Live, as most people refer to it in Classic, but I still consider Strathome to be a great setting. Like, the Burning City is fantastic, yet really tedious trash all the way through. Like, super, super tedious that got annoying. Being trapped in cages, being attacked by insects. It's not fun. You're just getting slowed down, especially during the actual Classic Classic, which is when I'm referring it to, when I originally did it, obviously. Uh, ridiculous diseases that no one ever dispelled that would just debuff you for like an hour uh, getting in there. And a boss that was uh, the final boss, even Baron Riven there uh, was just like, just so the amount of people who still die to that today in, in the remade <laughs> World of Warcraft is painful. And it's not fun either. <laughs> it's just not a fun boss. So I know a lot of people have a lot of strong memories for Strathome, but I, and I think this will be one that people are like, how can you rate that so lowly? Is every memory I have of that is just irritating. Uh, ninja pulls for galore the, the set out the patrolling paths and having to creep through it i get the idea of creeping through the streets and things like that but it, that's not what actually was happened i could twist it in my mind to that happening but it's not what actually happened uh, my next two are actually the remakes of the raids which would be zulaman and zulgarub um i can't help but look at these as really watered down thinned out versions of what were some of the best raids blizzard made uh, you guys know I really appreciate both Zulman and Zulgaro, but very, very highly in the raid versions. The dungeon versions seemed just less of a good thing. And I think that's really very negative towards them, is just how much less they were than the original versions. So you were obviously going to compare. And that's the thing. You're going to compare them to what they were based on originally. And we're going to have the same sort of problem with the Scarlet Monastery later, is that the originals were just better. They were way, way better. And what we got here was like, oh, okay sure <laughs> just not as good uh next up i actually i i really hate this dungeon <laughs> i really really hate this dungeon and people love this dungeon i can't stand it and i'm gonna pronounce it incorrectly because i've been saying it wrong i think since vanilla world of warcraft and i call it numerigan a lot of people call it gnome regan noma a million different names for this i think gnome regan is correct uh gnome, Re gnome regan gnome regan whatever you want to call it. But either way, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. I can't stand this dungeon. I'm lost in there every single time. The trash isn't fun. And it's, it's similar to the mother load. It just seems like Blizzard just doesn't know what to do with this kind of tech in a fantasy world. Because we do have the giant spider out on the platform. That's really cool. We have such interesting ideas with the punching cards and all that. But God, that dungeon sucks. It absolutely sucks. And in Classic, I did it. The original Classic, I think I did this twice. And then was like, I am never going here again. This blows so badly. It really does blow. Uh, next up in the kind of bottom tier of the dungeons is going to be two dungeons. Ajal Narub. 
Besides Hydronix coming up the path, which is terrifying and awesome, everything else about that dungeon sucks, including its length. It is quick. Like, Vital Hold is quick. But this is also out of the way. So, Vital Hold was in Dalaran, which was nice. So, you could, it's like, oh, okay, we're doing Vital Hold. It's right there. This one you had to fly down to, and you were there. It took you longer to fly there than to do the dungeon, especially by mid Wrath of the Lich King. And it's just not fun. And I, I also am very tainted here by doing the. Uh, dungeon meta achievement in here because if you don't know the original version of doing uh, Anubarak in the last part of Azul Narub was the only achievement that people were stuck on for a long time it was insanely hard to do uh, they did nerf it pretty quickly uh, after people were like what the hell is this we've done every other achievement yet this one on Anubarak you had to do it like four dps one tank and you had to wait and time it and get lucky with where he was going to spit the fl uh, 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 awful uh for such a terrible dungeon uh, i'm also going to throw in here our first um shadowlands dungeon sanguine depths fuck sanguine depths i it's so it's not only like irritating to run through and the trash is really annoying but it and claustrophobic but it's not interesting inside either. Besides the platform where you're looking out over the mall, which is cool, but we also do that in the open world, right? Very easily. It's just awful. Absolutely awful. I don't like any of the bosses. Uh, I think they're all really tedious. And just moving from corridor to corridor to corridor, bleh, uh, no thank you. We're going to go back to classic now, and this is going to be Black Fathom Deeps. I don't know why people like Black Fathom Deeps. It's just... <laughs> I, all I remember about Black Fathom Deeps, honestly, is people clicking the braziers, uh, the braziers, one after another and wiping the group over and over again. The bosses suck. The, I mean, the bit, the, the redeeming quality is the sort of maze above the water, and you can go under the water and do the extra boss. That's kind of cool, because this, this is higher up than the rest of them, right? But it's not a fun dungeon. Uh, it's not fun. The, the, and also, it has the Mario jumping in there. And I've done many, many pugs in my life where people could not do that. And just waiting for them for ages to get it done. It's just... It's it's all it's spread out and enclosed at the same time. Right? That's what I think about with Black Fathom Deeps. Is it seems open, but it's not. It's super linear in an open environment that has a lot of wasted space. Uh, and should be way cooler. Like, you go into that big open area and you've got the, the big platform you're expecting something cool. And it's just a crappy turtle. It fucking sucks. Uh, next up is Moradon, both wings. Um, it should be good. Again, it should be a great dungeon. And by classic standards, it was pretty good. Uh, so we are moving up in quality here. But it, it should... It, it's... I like the skips. I like the idea that you have multiple avenues. I like the open. I love the princess boss. It's hilarious. Every time you see the princess for the first time, it's going to put a smile on your face. It's really funny. Uh, but the actual dungeon itself and navigating around, I never found particularly enjoyable. Uh, I like that there's some extra bosses in there to get some extra loot. I think that's cool and we're moving more into that kind of stuff. But overall, Moradon, flying down to Desolus, having to get to Moradon, dealing with people running through the maze to get to the actual correct wing that we're going in. Dealing with especially a lot of the start of the dungeon was always super irritating. Uh, lots of ninja pulls, lots of extra trash, a lot of patrols again, uh, similar to what we saw in Strathom. Uh, it was never my... no thanks, <laughs> no thanks. Uh, next two, I have both the Razor Fen dungeons. Again, we're getting better here because they have some interesting bosses. I love the pig racing down. Uh, I kind of... Uh, I mean, there's that patrol, that, that escort quest that everybody wants to do when they're doing Razor Fen. It is a leveling dungeon, like a, a straight up leveling dungeon. Uh, that escort quest is just gouge your eyeballs out bad. Um, I like the idea when we move into like the necrotic areas of Razor Fen, when we, we the necromancy and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of cool. But overall, you're know, dealing with quail boars, the camera's constantly screwed up inside there, the mobs are really irritating, they're healing, they're running around. Um, ooh, no. No, not for me. <laughs> not for me. Uh, next up, we're going to the Burning Crusade, actually. Sethic Halls. Uh, the birdie one. Uh, as most people remember it, if you did the TBC at the time, it's the birdie one. Uh, the birdie one was super annoying. <laughs> like, this is one of those that intentionally Blizzard tried to screw with us. And of course, I'm kind of talking... I'm going to pull things here from the normal and the heroic versions, because the heroic versions were much more difficult. Uh, but the AoE fears that are constantly going in there, constantly killing totems and things like that in Sethic Halls. And the bosses weren't particularly memorable. I actually, This is one of the first ones I had to go back and watch a video to remember what the bosses were in there. Uh, just to try and refresh me on that one. The same with the next up in Wrath of the Lich King, which was Halls of Stone. Halls of Stone is... It had that ludicrously long horde invasion thing, which was never hard on normal or heroic. And it lasted forever. 
and it's just not fun. I don't know why Blizzard does this, where they just have these gauntlets, but they're not gauntlet gauntlets. They're just really long, uh, and they're boring, and you're just jumping around and doing stuff. And there's some interesting bosses in the Halls of Stone. But overall, I just remember being miserable <laughs> and not wanting to do it, mainly because of that 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 boss. Uh, every time people wanted to do it, I was like, uh, I'd rather do anything else. Um, next up is uh, going to be a BFA dungeon, actually. Uh, Shrine of the Storm. Kind of similar to what I said earlier. The setting is fantastic. Hentai mounting is very cool. Uh, I like the setting of it. I like that we go underwater. I kind of like the mind control boss. But overall, I just... It's a dodge, right? When that, someone's posting that key, you want to do shrine, you're like... Uh, uh, <laughs> you're going to give it a miss. So I can't rate this one highly uh, at all. And I'm going to say that's similar with the next one, which is Spires of Ascension. The Spires of Ascension. Uh, Spires of Ascension, I have a fondness for it. More than most people. Uh, every time I speak to people, they hate it. And it's because of the insane downtime moving through there. Where you're just flying on them Valkyrie. That one that leads to the last boss is so obnoxious. It really is incredible. It's not that scenic. It's just obnoxious. We can see the outlook from the top. And you you put brushed up against the wall. If you're trying to set an environment. like Most people are staring at the wall waiting for it to come out. So it just feels like an elevator ride. And it takes forever, and you can misclick, and your tank leaves, and you got to jump to get back, and all this kind of stuff. Um, it's not fun. It isn't. I can't give it the credit for being fun. I actually think the last boss is mega tedious, uh, and not a friend. Not a friend uh, on any shape or form. Uh, next up, we're going back to BFA again. Um, another one where I don't mind. At this point, we're doing dungeons that I don't particularly mind doing. I'm like fine with it. I'm probably not going to have a good time though. So this would be like Siege of Baralis. But it should be more fun than it is. And I think that's where my disappointment comes from. Similar to Motherload, right? It should be better than what it is. And uh, Siege of Baralis should be, should be better than what it is. The last boss has got a really cool concept. Shooting cannons at it to kill it. You can't kill it yourself, that kind of stuff. But that last boss sucks. Fucking really irritating. You're just killing tentacles and adds. It's like a really... It's like a baby's first Deathwing fight. Uh, it actually sucks completely. The The big boss is kind of okay. It's got some very tedious trash in there, though. Like going through the banana trash, especially the first few times. It's okay once you master the dungeon, but it's the same with anything. Once you master the dungeon, it just becomes... It's like you see the Matrix. You don't even see the mobs anymore. You see the code. Uh, and Siege of ended up like that for me, where it was like, I just have to pre-know this stuff and just constantly look out for slipping on bananas while dealing with AoE fear, which puts you through walls and stuff like that. And it was just... It was one of those that I just never enjoyed. Uh, the same with the under rot. Under rot. In fact, uh, <laughs> this back to back here, BFA dungeons. And I know a lot of people like a lot of BFA dungeons, so I think we should put a note in here is these dungeons change uh, unquestionably. I was wrestling with this a little bit before talking, is that Mythic Plus really alters your perspective on these dungeons uh, very much. So I'm trying to look at them from a more reasonable angle. So nothing really plus Mythic, Mythic Plus 5. Uh, because some things scale, you know, if you're doing Mythic Plus 20, some things in these dungeons scale beyond uh, what reasonable players are going to find, and therefore it would be a skewed perspective. So bear that in mind, is I'm not talking about these at a, a really high level when things start to get really wonky, which is what happens with Mythic Plus. Uh, so for me, Underrot, I never enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of a, a dismal place. I liked the start of it. I really liked the concept. And I think during the Alpha and the Beta, I thought it was really cool. The more I investigated the final product... Nah, it drifted away from me. I, I like I like some of the concepts. I like popping the mushrooms on the other boss. Uh, I kind of like the open field that we have to fight the second boss in. Um, but other than that, it just it got tedious. A lot of diseases, a lot of forced. A really Blizzard being really stringent with the Mythic Plus style of making sure that X was interrupted. Otherwise, the dungeon turns into an absolute calamity. Uh, you got them mobs that like stun you for like 10, 10, 15 seconds. And in Pug World, oh, oh, absolutely horrendous. Pur a lot of purges and things like that. I like the the boss, the mechanics there. When an organized group, it's kind of okay. Uh, but generally, I did a lot of pugging, obviously, uh, for content. And what I found in the Underart was like, oh, uh, pretty spooks. Same with Temple of Sothralis. Uh, Temple of Sothralis, I remember when I first saw it, I was like, this dungeon's going to just ruin lives. And it kind of did. Uh, Snacks, Snack Temple, as most people refer to it. Uh, the the intro to it was really busy and tedious, certainly when you included some Mythic Plus in there. Um, 
I didn't find any of the environments particularly good. We had the second boss we had us waiting around, waiting for it to jump around all the time. Then we had that stupid maze that some people got stuck in. And then we had the thing with fucking playing basketball with the eyeballs and the skull. And sometimes that just went so wrong that it was just tedious. It wasn't fun to do. And that's kind of where I'm at with these dungeons. Like, I just, I wasn't having fun. More times than not, I was not having fun in Temple of Sothralis unless I was with my friends and having good times. Um, next up is Dark Art Thicket, actually. We're trying to get into some better dungeons here. I start, I'm really starting to enjoy myself in these dungeons now. Dark Art Thicket, I don't have anything particularly against. It was just very bleh. Uh, it was okay. The Xavier's fight is fine. But do I have a big, fun memory of it? Nah, not really. But I don't have anything stupidly negative to say. Grimrail Depot is one of those ones that I was really disappointed with, but grew to kind of enjoy. Uh, the, the idea of fighting on the train is really cool. And actually, it, it was it just ended up being a corridor, which was a bit of a shame. Because once they said we're having this dungeon that's on a train, a moving train, that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, but ultimately, we ended up just moving through a one linear corridor. But it had interesting mechanics along the way. The flamethrowers uh, leading to the final boss was very cool. Lots to like in there. Same with Gate of the Setting Sun. This was the most disappointing dungeon I think I had in Mr. Pandaria, pretty much. Uh, it seemed like it was going to be awesome, and then just wasn't, which is a real shame. Uh, we just moved through a simple dungeon, and then we have a weird sort of vehicle-type boss at the end. It looks really cool. We drop down into the big courtyard. He's, like, smashing things to pieces. Ultimately, we kind of just throw ourselves up on him, and it's kind of annoying. And the rest just kind of run around underneath him, doing minimal damage while a couple of people kill the boss. Uh, it's relatively quick, though, so there's that that's going for it. Uh, next up, I, put, I have, actually have Blackrock Caverns, the first dungeon you do in the Cataclysm. It's a decent dungeon. It's just so ludicrously easy, and you smash it to pieces, and it's very short. And it was also the introduction of the automatic questing through dungeons, which they then removed later on in further expansions. Real shame with Blackrock Caverns, because the setting's okay. It's just the bosses aren't particularly interesting and your first impression of it and first impressions are everything is that it's yeah uh, you kind of smash through it for loot it's it's like it exists just for loot and it also gave you like two levels something crazy in the cataclysm so you could just skip mount hyjal if you did the black rock caverns and that's what really led it down for me and it's heroic version it was kind of better it was still too short in my opinion but it was it was okay it was it was trying to recapture black rock depths i don't think it did that i think that's its biggest failing is it didn't do that Next up is probably going to surprise some of you, because I think a lot of you probably love this dungeon, but uh, I grew to hate this dungeon, and that is the Halls of Reflection. The Halls of Reflection's entire thing is the final chase with Arthas, which is cool. It is cool. Mechanically, it's boring. Uh, the actual thing that's happening is cool, but the gameplay involved with it is kill the thing that spawns out the ground, and then... Very quickly, if you've done this dungeon a couple of times, you're just kind of waiting for others to finish. <laughs> and you're like, come on, dude, can you move a little bit quicker? You are supposed to be imposing. And it took away a lot of the essence of Arthas, in my opinion, that he built up over the course of the expansion. Uh, in the Legacy of Wrath of the Lich King, I pointed out that Arthas pops up all the time in different areas and is very intimidating, very menacing. And then we got this dungeon, which was supposed to be cool. Let's not even talk about the first couple of bosses, which are awful. The statues spawning and all that kind of stuff. Garbage. Hide in a corner through the whole dungeon. Ugh. Uh, but the it is redeemed by the Arthas moment, which ultimately falls flat because it took a lot of the menace out of it because you were just kind of hopping around uh, waiting for things to happen. Next up is the Underbog. It was the multiple routes, big environments. You should love it and didn't. Uh, I did not enjoy this one at all. It was lots of hallways moving towards. Very beautiful, though. It's a very beautiful dungeon, it is. It's very, very pretty. Gameplay-wise, though, it's terrible. Uh, moving, j jumping from ledge to ledge and then moving through these little... F and uh, dealing with the fence strides and stuff. Again, very, very pretty. Just, meh, ultimately. Next up, I have the Alkendown Dungeon from Warlords of Draenor. Uh, this is another one of those dungeons where Blizzard was trying to play on nostalgia a little bit and bring it up to a refreshing. There's nothing really wrong with trying to refresh an old idea and put a new twist on it but it's still borrowed right it's a borrowed architecture it's a borrowed style and it's the layout of the dungeon that didn't drive me crazy because it's got that back and forth style you have to pick a direction go that way and then come back now thankfully they did put like a boss in the middle of it but you're still just walking this tunnel and it's just long corridors like that sanguine depth style of just long corridors not something i particularly like it's one of the reasons that really kept when i was going through this i was like 
I kind of like this dungeon, but this this element of it that I remember distinctly whenever the group wanted to run it is like, ah, oh, it's one of the ones I would put to the bottom of the list, honestly. Let's now go on to the slave pens. This thing should be higher on the list, but... I had to farm this thing so hard. Quagmirin has the best trinket in the Burning Crusade, which means you have to plow through this time after time. And as the guild tank, I was expected to be there for the whole damn thing. And I was. I think at one point I was doing like 30 slave pen runs in a day. Something ridiculous like that. The layout's kind of nice and the bosses are kind of interesting, but the way the trash is laid out involves a lot of standing around and trying to maneuver yourself around corridors i do like the big crab that comes down i think that's one of the most distinctive parts of it the big bog struck i think they're called that kind of wiggles itself out but it was a boss that ultimately ended up being skipped half the time which really pissed me off because i thought that's the most interesting part of it they tried to recreate it with quagmirin if you remember he like comes out of the water but I, later in the expansion and my memory might be faulty here i think they bugged his animation so that he kind of like popped up in stages it was like he was walking upstairs but floating up there so, slave pens would come in here. Uh, next up, but I do have this class near the bottom. Sorry, fellas, because uh, I know a lot of you love this dungeon, but I, yeah, I mean, Wailing Caverns. Wailing Caverns is not good. It's the same as the slave pens, just not as pretty. Is this back and forth style. I know people love this dungeon, but this dungeon sucks. <laughs> it's really shit. <laughs> it's got that maze-like feature that's not particularly cool the trash isn't that fun you're, you're cut off and running around with interrupts going everywhere because mobs are everywhere and it's i'm looking at it again from the classic version a lot of weird patrols that you you'll go all the way left and then come back again and now there's more mobs than when you left the first time you're like what the hell's going on uh what's this extra boss oh it's a turtle that drops a green shield but that green shield mic is awesome yeah but it's the boss the, doing the actual stuff to get there is terrible i do like the end besides the tedious escort quest again very slow escort quest but the sort of impromptu horde mode that you get at the end uh is kind of cool but you have to work through a lot of crap to get there. You have to work through a lot of crap. It's it's more of a nostalgia. I th I feel like Wailing Caverns is one of those nostalgia things. And when I went back playing vanilla and did Wailing Caverns again, I was like, God, this is terrible. This is awful dungeon design. I'm not a fan. Uh, next up is Drak Tharan Keep. From Wrath of the Lich King. Drak Tharan Keep. Um, I wanted so much to enjoy Drak Tharan Keep. And if you would have asked me before I started looking at all the dungeons as a, as a whole, I probably would have rated Drak Tharan Keep quite high. But looking back on it, not a fan. A lot of endlessly spawning enemies that uh, were difficult to manage. And I think it was the kind of the, run, the time when things like Tricks of the Trade and Misdirect, which had just joined the game, were starting to become apparent because there was a lot of trash around there that just needed to be constantly picked up and managed. And I remember as a tank just running around managing things in Drakthar and Keep, uh, dealing with very tedious bosses as well, especially the one on the stairs. Ugh. Uh, not fun at all. Uh, so no good memories of Drakthar and Keep, unfortunately. Now, another one I know people love, uh, but obviously the list is a list, uh, is Vault of the Wardens. Um, I, I originally remember kind of liking Vault of the Wardens, and then it very quickly started to become more and more irritating by, by the day. Uh, I, I would even say, like at certain points, I probably consider this to be one of the best dungeons uh, in Legion. And yet, the more I did it, the less I enjoyed it. Because I think the start of where you're getting the Demon Hunters and going through the vault itself was kind of cool to go back to. Then when you actually go back to it, you think about some of those bosses, especially the ones with, like, the facing. <laughs> you know, you have to do the facing. And then going down into the different pits. It's nice to be fighting the prisoners, but it's kind of like what Violet Hold was, right? The idea, the theme of it is nice. In practice, though, nah, not for me. Going going one way, then coming back, especially because when the bosses got easier and easier and easier, uh, you kind of ended up just bored to death here. Uh, next up is going to be slightly better than the Halls of Reflection, which was the Forge of Souls. Thematically great. Dungeon, average. And we're really in like the average territory here. Uh, I would put this as like they're decent enough, right? They're decent enough. They're not obnoxiously, uh, they're not obnoxious in any way. Uh, moving up to the side of actually being pretty good. Uh, Forge of Souls, I actually think, is a pretty good dungeon. The only issue I have with Forge of Souls, why it's lower on the list, is that it was reusing bosses uh, from other parts of the game in a very simplified version. So there was nothing new or exciting in Forge of Souls besides the second boss, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but everything else was something they'd already done before. And this was kind of the time when I felt that Blizzard was uh, looking, because they were still in that Naxxramas people didn't get to see. This is Wrath of Lich King, right? 
people didn't get to see xyz content so we can still use that it's kind of fresh but for those of us who had seen these bosses in classic and the burning crusade and other raids in wrath of the lich king it just felt really lazy uh and that was my disappointment in forge of souls the actual environment we were in though mm, pretty good uh i can say the same about the next one which would be the everbloom the everbloom very much enjoyed the Everbloom. Uh, the setting, although it had all the skips, which is why it slowed down on the list, because I, I imagine a lot of people think of the Everbloom and they just think about tediously trying to jump on a yak up a wall and do all that kind of stuff. But the actual Everbloom itself was super cool. It had a very clear path, despite it having circular movement and, and ranged. Good variety of trash as well, which I think is so important to keep your interest if the trash is all the same all the time. And it wasn't in the Everbloom. Uh, it really kept your eyes going. And I did this dungeon probably a hundred plus times uh, and enjoyed every single run of it. So the Everbloom is a very cool dungeon. Really cool. It didn't like, it lacked something magnificent. Uh, something that really made it go, ah, very cool. Uh, which something, some dungeons do have that, but it doesn't always pay off, which would be the example in our next one, the Court of Stars. Um, there's a lot going for it here. They've just got so underutilized, sadly. All the buffs that you could pick up around Court of Stars. What drags it down? It's that ridiculous find, identify the guy thing at the end. I dreaded it every single time. It's not even hard, but it's annoying. It's not fun. Uh, it's re I, For me, I know this is a subjective list, uh, but for me, no, man. Like Every time I was like, Ugh. especially when someone like got it wrong and you can see people just mindly clicking. And of course, if you're doing pugging, you'll, the same thing happens that happens in every dungeon that has something like this. A great example would be Mists of Turn Aside, um, which is up next, ironically enough. Um, people just don't bother. They wait for someone else to do it. And the amount of dungeon runs I did for TDPs and things where people would go, oh, it's this bit. And they'd just go and stand at the top and they'd just wait for someone else to do it. And on occasion, nobody would do it. And I, out of curiosity, I'd be like, I'm not going to do it to see what happens. And people would just stand there. <laughs> people would just stand there and just wait for someone to do it. So you'd have a really good run up to that point and then it just fall apart because people couldn't fucking be bothered. Oh, man. Bad times. Uh, next up, I put Naltharian's Lair. Do you remember Naltharian's Lair? Um... It's a decent boss. Very thematic, actually. Very. Uh, this is a decent dungeon. I, I hate the fact that during the beta, and, or the alpha, whenever Naltharian's Lair came into the game, people already found the skip down the left side to avoid the trash. And I have a really distinct memory here of Naltharian's Lair being available for the first time globally ever on beta. And on the day after that, people were bitching at people for not knowing the skip. Uh, and they, that the memory sticks with me to this day of being in a group where this guy was like, don't you know you can skip this? Why are you wasting all time? Like bitching at a guy. It had been out for about 16 hours and people were moaning about the skips. Overall though, it's a decent dungeon, right? Now, Therion's Lair is pretty good. I can't say I was ever a fan of the spot the spot the the follow the thingy when it goes underground, the boss that goes underground and kind of mooches around. I can't say I was ever a fan of that. Yet... Uh, Killing the big worm, kind of cool. Uh, that was all right. I liked the mechanics that were on there. I did not like the last boss ever. I thought it was thought it was something that looked grandiose, like sp it had a spectacle to it. But fun-wise, not so much. Uh, oh God, keep though. Oh God, keep is my next one. Oh God, keep. I really kind of enjoy. Uh, I like the progression through it, through the forges and through the pens that you have to deal with with the dragons, moving up to the end. So you're kind of okay-ish boss. Like the final boss is the weakest element of Utgard Keep, in my opinion. Yet, I never mind to do Utgard Keep. I think the only the only negative memory I have about Utgard Keep is that later on in the life cycle of the expansion is it became something that you cleared in one pull because gear scaling got so insanely stupid. So if I look at it back when it we were first doing it, Utgard Keep is one of those places that really fits the theme. Kind of, It's kind of what Black uh, <coughs> Blackrock Caverns was going for in creating this sort of claustrophobic, hot, work workable environment where it looked like life was happening, but did it so much better, in my opinion. Uh, another one that was great thematically, in fact, so the next few dungeons are all going to be the theme that carries them rather than the gameplay. The gameplay is going to be kind of average throughout the rest of the next 10 or so, where it's the theme that I think really works. So we can kind of burn through these. Uh, Shadow Moon Burial Ground. I think they nailed the theme in that one. Like, I, the environment of being in Shadow Moon Burial Ground was really cool. <clears throat> I enjoyed it every single time. Gameplay-wise, nothing overly spectacular, uh, but the actual theme of it and the, the environment you're in was very cool. Uh, Bloodmore Slagmines, exactly the same again. I like the fact that we were in a city. 
that was cool like moving through the city felt awesome uh, i loved the boss that pushed you back uh, and you had to deal with that it was the first time i ever played with the fat boss guys and we had a blast in there i enjoyed the, the blood ball slag mines considerably one of the better dungeons i've done i would say that I, I think they nailed the theme perfectly not every boss was amazing the first and the last boss aren't great uh but some some elements in there really showed some good promise same as shadow Pan monastery shadow Pan monastery is really cool it's a shame the bosses suck so bad <laughs> especially the two dudes who fly down oh my god uh it's also a shame that this dungeon ended up uh the same as most mr pandaria dungeons which is being crushed into the ground late expansion so i'm taking this from early on the the big panda moving around and changing and you know being being false images and things like that that's cool the premise is there and the setting is fantastic it's not mechanically amazing but it it works for what it is uh, and it's got a good finale as well, moving to the end. I like the rage mechanic at the end. That was nice and interesting twist that moves it above other similar dungeons. Uh, same with the Arcway. Kind of really dig the Arcway. Uh, despite the fact that it is a big loop that ends in, you know, a boss fight right at the very beginning. I think that worked really well in the Arcway. Uh, I think it had a good variety of trash. I liked... I, I remember raging so bad. And you guys can probably find TDPs of me raging super hard in the Arcway. Um, <laughs> as the... Um, as the people weren't moving away on the spider boss and things like that. But overall, I think the Arcway, again, sets the mood really well for what it is. And moving around, the bosses were interesting enough. The trash was nice and varied, which is what you're hoping for in a, in a good mid-level dungeon, is that it's all right. Does it do anything spectacular? Not quite. Uh, but we'll, we'll take a break there. That's a lot we've covered. And in part two, we'll obviously do the, um, the best of the best. And I'm looking at what the best of the best is right now. And it's good. <laughs> it's really good. So let me come back to you then. Thank you so much for watching. This is a lot of dungeons, so I think it's better if we do it in two parts. Thank you. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye.